morning friends uh, today we will continue our discussion of base and superstructure in the writings of Karl Marx primarily in Das Kapital or Kapital Point One. But as I did in the last class, I'll give a very short introduction about Karl Marx, social capital. There are multiple interpretations of the text of the kind Weber and Gmail, who it also Pronounced as he made but Marxism had entered into political imagination as well as global culture. Primarily after the First World War, but in a more sophisticated way after the ride of postmodern culture, postmodern ideology and post-modern social sciences since 1969. As a result, we have a profoundly distorted Over simplified and theoretically reified concept of Marx and his works. The reason is that, unlike the other theorists, Primarily by Kaiman, George Simen, but also to a later extent of Max Weber. Karl Marx and his writings. I mean not books but passages and interpretations of the specific passages of Marxist writings by Marx himself. A large number of people are aware about Marx than about other sociological theorists. And I have also experienced during my teaching to your batch that some of you have also been 
victim of non-academic social imagination about Marx and Marxism, both in positive and a negative ways. And elsewhere in the global village, in this class also, there are people who like or dislike Marx without reading his original works. If not in original, then at least in reliable translations. In that sense, Karl Marx is a popular figure, he is an icon, he is a mobilizing factor in discussions, and here he transcends the academic boundary. In this situation, Marx is perhaps the most problematic of all theorists for a new student of sociology and social sciences. Therefore, I request that all the students of this class this is a humble request. All the students of this class should suspend any knowledge which they already might have of Marx and about his text before they were enrolled in this class. This is my humble request to all of you with folded hands. Please suspend your earlier understanding of Marx and his works. You need not be a bhakta of Karl Marx or an opponent of Shatru of Karl Marx like there are in China about Xi Jinping or in Russia about Vladimir Putin or in India about Narendra Modi or Indira Gandhi or Jawaharlal Nehru or Mahatma Gandhi or B.R. Ambedkar. I am a very, very simple teacher of classical sociology. For the first time, I am using the word teacher. So far, I have been using the term student. I am a very humble student of sociological theory, classical sociological theory. And I expect from all of you that you will suspend your unfounded understanding that is your earlier understanding, including your understanding which were made during your undergraduate classes. Because so far as I know, none of your graduate teachers in India or anywhere else read the sociologists in the original. And they are fortunate because once you do not read the original text, you have the liberty of having any view or, or you know, the, the opposite of view, that is, ideology or opinions. Compared with Durkheim, as we will see next week in our fourth class on Marx. Uh, as I said, I will give two lectures 
on base and superstructure in the writings of Karl Marx. And then I will give two lectures where the view of Karl Marx will be contrasted with the view of Max Weber in particular, but also with the view of Meilenheim and his followers, including the academic disciples. Uh, yeah. Therefore, I will. Uh, what I am saying just now will come not today or tomorrow or day after, but it will come, you know, on next Monday. That is in the fourth class. I am repeating my sentence. Compared with Durkheim, Marx had. A comparatively sophisticated concept of society, which he saw as structured in a more complex way than the Durkheimian concept of mechanical or organic. Solidarity in. However, the same cannot be said about Marxist concept of state, market, or the military establishments. Uh, I said this because you should not be in delusion that I am a bhakta of my time. I am not a bhakta that is, you know, a religious follower of either my time or Karl Marx. Nor I am an opponent of the sociology of Max Weber. My only problem is my knowledge of six European languages. I am saying this is my problem because since I have read them in the original. All of them, Marx, Weber, Kain, Emil, Italian socialist, Winfred, Pareto, and many others. Therefore, I find difficulty uh, when in sociological discussion. People make their statements in seminars and panels and classrooms without reading the whole book from back to back, only on the basis of their class notes 30 years ago or their favorite commentary. Okay. Uh, like Agas Conte or Comte or just Comte at the French say many my time. Marx too developed the idea of a society which existed sui generis S U I G E N E R I S. This is a term which my new 
used many times. And I have also used this concept in my first phase of lectures. Uh, please remember, I'll explain it on Monday. I'm just giving you an over. Like Comte and Durkheim, Marx too developed the idea of a society which existed sui generis, but he conceived of it in a very different way, emphasizing the material conditions of people's lives. Here, uh, most people make a sin, not just a crime, of superimposing the image of Frederick Engels, Vladimir Lenin, or other Marxists that uh, Karl Marx was a materialist, he emphasized materialism. In the original, Marx did not do this, and this line is an example to so make a note and underline it in bold letters. I am repeating. Marx conceived of society in a very different way, emphasizing the material conditions of people's lives. Here the emphasis is on material conditions of people's lives. People's are important, not the material conditions. You got the difference. The final nuance difference. He is not saying that material conditions of society are the base. He is saying that the material conditions of people's lives is the base. And the rest is superstructure. Uh, a little later I will explain what he means by this. But first let me complete what I have prepared for today's lecture. Marx conceived of society in a very different way, emphasizing the material conditions of people's lives and the fundamental importance of history. Now his concept of history is very different from the concept of history given by the German idealist philosopher Hegel or philosophers of history in Western Europe since 18th century. Unlike others, to think that history is guided to a large extent by impersonal forces of nature, planetary positions and the brute logic of materialist forces represented primarily today by
by the mathematical logic of capitalist development. Unlike this view, or against this view, or in response to this view, Karl Marx emphasized, and I am neither endorsing nor rejecting his view, I am just presenting as it is in the original writings of Karl Marx, that history is made by man. History is the product of man's collective lives. He saw himself, Marx saw himself as the scientist of society and the development of social forms just like Emile Durkheim and his so-called Guru Agast also claimed. As a result, the commentators have clubbed the three together Thus, called by Lukheim and Karl Marx as positivist, a school in social sciences which developed in 19th century. In the history of European knowledge systems, there had been a steady displacement of medieval Christian, uh, that was uh, Catholic Christianity, because in medieval times there was no Protestant movement, uh, I am repeating. In the history of European knowledge systems, there had been a steady displacement of medieval Christian understanding of earth and human centric universe and cosmos. This is called humanism by European thinkers post-European enlightenment of 18th century and there is a little critique of this humanism by Theodore Adorno and Max Horkheimer of critical school who are usually regarded as neo-Marxists. But the root is there in not only Marx but other people. Uh, let us come to the point again. In this displacement, physicist Galileo biologist Darwin, philosopher Karl Marx, psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, and Albert Einstein played a paradigmatic role. With Galileo came the realization that 
earth is not the center of the universe but it is just one planet amongst many in one solar system amongst many uh what was the view earlier in medieval europe uh, in the teachings of uh, the catholic fathers that the earth is the system of universe or cosmos and the sun revolves around the earth and uh, there is only one earth and only one sun and this is Christ is the son of S O N son of son S U N son this view was challenged by Galileo and Galileo said that there is not only one solar system but there are many solar systems in the galaxy or the cosmos and it is the earth which moves around, revolves around the sun and not the other way round. With Darwin came the realization that humanity is not the center of his But one development amongst others in the course of a long process of evolution. What was the view? The view was that everything on earth had been made for the consumption of earth. Sorry. Really sorry. The earlier we was that everything on earth is for the consumption of man in capital letters M A A N. Why man in capital letters? Because in medieval times everybody who looked anatomically and physiologically the same was not considered man. Uh, there was a concept of fully developed uh, civilizational man which was restricted to only white Christians of Western Europe followed by the less developed uh, religions like uh, Judaism and Islam found in Europe then. There were barbarians of Asia and the savage of Africa followed by the human machines or slaves bought in the slave market of the ancient and medieval worlds. And the ideological root of both capitalism and colonization is rooted in this concept of medieval concept of Christianity with capital letters M A A N. Therefore European man was a religious concept. We 
which was structurally retained even after modernity only it was given a protestant version and it was called secular but whether they are catholics or the seculars which it is you don't name for protestants christians it is the other matter that fools working in the university and the academic college of western masters it in in western university of europe and america do not understand the historical dynamics of the genealogy of the terms including modernity development progress civilization yes we have finished galileo and darwin with marx in the realizes that human beings are not the creators of society but are creatures of society the product of the social world into which they are born now what is the difference between marx marxian concept of society he considers that society is not the creation of man or individual beings uh, individually or collectively rather human beings are creatures of society rather society creates man but what is marx's concept of history marx said that unlike society history is created by man okay now let us come to sigmund freud with freud came the understanding that the human individual is the product of unconscious forces and did unconscious forces are not fully in control of man himself or herself now this uh, argument of uh, sigmund freud uh, was developed parallelly by italian sociologist and economist vincent perito we are see the term for unconscious forces in the residues and there is a debate who developed this idea first sigmund freud and vincent perito and there is no agreement uh, in the academia so far but let us not go into uh, this controversy let us come to albert einstein's 
before Albert Einstein, uh, all social sciences, all the humanities, and all natural sciences and physical sciences believed in the Newtonian concept of space and time. As I said in one of the earlier classes, Isaac Newton was not a secular scientist. Whether you take uh, academic uh, understanding of secular and Protestantism, he was very much a Catholic father of Anglican Church. Uh, he, some of the views uh, differed from the Orthodox views of official Anglican Church, which was then a part of the Catholic Church or Roman Catholic world. Nonetheless, in case you read all the hit books, including Principia Mathematica, which is uh, usually regarded as the foundation of uh, natural and physical sciences in the modern world. There is no doubt that the Newtonian concept of space and time is not fundamentally different from the Catholic concept of space and time. There is an Indian sociologist. Uh, he was my teacher when I was a student of Delhi School of Economics. His name is J. T. S. Uberoi. And since uh, 1967, Till 2004, he is still alive and he gave up with a book, which is a collection of his major writings. It has the same title, which is the title of Wilfred Rito's book, Mind and Society. All the major writings of JPS Pirai. Except to politics of Lari, which is about Proviander uh, uh, Islands, its nogafi of Pranisila Melinuaski, and uh, his second work, which is the only work he did, he wrote about India. Namely, religion, civil society, and the state. Subtitled is the study of Sikhism. He had one major article, Science and Swarad, written in 1967 and three major works between 1978 and 2004. And all the three books are about culture and science. Uh, the first book published in 19... 
78 is titled as Science and Culture. And the second book is titled as The Other Mind of Europe, The Other Mind of Europe, Othe or Gete as a scientist. And the third book is European Modernity. In case you read the three books together, you will understand two things. Number one, all the major social scientists before Marshall Moss and Claude Levi Strauss were influenced by Isaac Newton and Isaac Newton was not the best scientist Europe had before Albert Einstein. In his sophisticated language of engineering, yes, Debye Sugarai and Max Weber both were trained as engineers and then they came to sociology of social sciences. Now, what was that concept of Newton? About space and time, which every major social scientist borrowed. Including Karl Marx, Max Weber, and even, uh, you know, uh, in my time before the publication of Primitive Classification, which he wrote with his nephew Marx and Boss. Now, this concept of, uh, you know, uh, Newtonian concept of space and time was challenged by Albert Einstein. In a series of uh, celebrated uh, articles in the professional journals of physics, uh, there is a popular notion which has no foundation that Einstein gave the concept of relativity. The concept of relativity for the first time by Isaac Newton himself. Then what is special about Albert Einstein? In case uh, some of you are interested to read during the semester or later on in your life, uh, and uh, even if you are not trained in the language of physics, I will recommend two of his very popular books written for the lay persons like me and you. One is a small booklet, The World as I See It by Albert Einstein. And second is Idea and Minions. But in his, uh, you know, professional uh, celebrated uh, articles for which he got Nobel Prize, he developed a special theory of relativity, not theory of relativity, a special theory of reality, like 
Durkheim had a theory, theory of suicide rate and not a theory of suicide. Like Marx was not a materialist rather, he gave a materialist interpretations of history in which human beings played a very important role of mediator. Albert Einstein said that time and space are relative terms and this relativity is, you know, uh, not only uh, relativity of uh, time in the context of uh, astronomy that is regarding the transits of planets in the galaxy rather the concept of time and space is also also culturally different Secondly, he said that time is not linear, sorry, time is not unilinear, rather time is circular like the circular earth. The biblical belief or the Christian belief was that earth is flat. The red earth is round, not round as a circle, but round as an orange. In case you have seen orange, uh, it is available in the market these days. Therefore, earth is, you know, circular like orange, and time is culturally relative as well as. You know, it is also, you know, cyclical. There is a cycle of time, spiral time, and also a spiral space. For example, in the households in which all of us live, There is a classification of space and time. For example, there is a kitchen which is regarded sacred and pure. Now, purity is a concept which is not there in the concept of sacred and profane in time. But purity and pollution are much more important terms in one of the followers of the time via Levi Strauss, namely Louis Dumont in his book Hobo Hierarchicus. Now, in your home or my home or anybody's home, Every space in our house is not the same. There are culturally pure spaces like kitchen and uh, you know puja room that is a place where you or your parents worship. Uh, including those who are Marxists, they worship our Marx. And this is not me. I am not a very original person, I am a traditional person and in tradition there is no originality. Uh, you know there is no author of the book in tradition, therefore we do not know who wrote the Vedas, who wrote uh, you know, the Quran, who wrote uh, Bhagavad Gita, who wrote uh, the Bible. These are considered revealed books. Uh, now, uh, revelation is a semantic term of Brahmanic religions. In case you want to use a different term, I will not say secular term, different term. 
because secular input is same. Uh, I will say that these books are not written by one person in one space at one time, rather these sacred books or sacred representations evolved over a time, a period of time. And there, uh, this evolution was not unilinear. This concept of space and time, you can uh, check in your you know, uh, house in case you are living in a hostel, even in new hostels. You are not supposed to urinate in the dining hall or you are not supposed to worship or you know make your food in the latrine. Uh, this is Albert Einstein and Arnold Twain we said that uh, who said Marxism is an irritant. Marxism is an irritant in itself. And in case, you know, you take uh, uh, one paragraph from Marxism, that is the Communist Manifesto, one paragraph from Quran, one paragraph from the Bible, one paragraph from Hindu Puranas, Quran, Quran, Bible, or even one uh, paragraph from our religion, Buddhism, and one paragraph from Communist Manifesto, and mix them, you know, in a uh, pot, and most learned people will not be able to make a sense whether it is from Marxism or it is from Islam or it is from Hinduism or it is from Christianism, uh, it is from, uh, you know, Protestantism or Catholicism or Hinduism or Buddhism or Sikhism or whatever. So far as structural logic goes, all collective representations, whether they are from so-called recognized religions or so-called unrecognized religions like Marxism or fundamentalism or terrorism of any variety, they are one and the same thing. Of course, this is a controversial statement, but here we are not going to make controversy, rather I am requesting all of you, including myself, to introspect. Whether this concept of us and them, he and she, human beings and non human beings, earth and sun, Is rooted in the reality as it is, or it is a product of our culture, our socialization, our training, our school. Think about it and let us come to where I left you in my last class. I had read five points uh, 
which I will read it again with some, some additions. The first point was Marxist capital explained Ruth, ruthlessly and irresistibly that at least in the capitalist mode of production found in his time and he died in 1883. There is a mathematical logic of capitalist growth. And this uh, mathematical logic uh, can be translated in social science language as inevitable, objective, not subjective, impulse to growth which characterize a production for private profit, this is what Karl Marx, I will add, or national profit. For example, we know that unemployment is rising everywhere. We know that the poor are becoming poorer everywhere. And the rich are becoming richer everywhere. Not only in Europe and United States of America, but also in China and Russia and India and Pakistan and Iran and Turkey and in Bangladesh or anywhere else. What is that logic which is still relevant in Marx? Much has flown in the river Ganges or Nile or Amazon. But Marx said, you know, conceptualization has remained the same. In case you follow the industrial mode of production, there has to be a mathematical logic of growth. Whether it is capitalism of Marx's time or, or it is national capitalism of China or cultural nationalism of India or cultural nationalism of Russia, you know, nationalism of contemporary Turkey or Bangladesh or Islamic democracy of Pakistan. Growth is measured in quantitative terms. Therefore, why Comrade Jinping is proud of China's growth story, the miracle? Everybody knows, including Comrade Jinping, that 90% Chinese are very poor, very exploited. But the gross domestic income of China is growing. Now in this gross domestic income, GD, uh, you know, uh, 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 gross domestic product, GDP, there is no data about how this growth of the nation is distributed among the people.
this inside of Karl Marx is still relevant, although Marxism is discredited and for the good reasons everywhere else. But Marx as a sociological theorist is still relevant to understand the world around us everywhere. Thank you.